Welcome everybody to our Communion Sunday service, 21st, oh sorry, 11th of July, 2021. Welcome one and all. I sure miss looking out from the pulpit and seeing your faces, but it is what it is at the moment and we need to stay safe. We need to follow the protocols. Um, next week, church or not, I'll let you know. We're just waiting to hear. And please, if you can, go and have your injections. Um, it's not as bad as you think and it's quite efficient and really um if you can go and have it done let's see if we can keep each other safe and sound our call to worship this morning is taken from psalm 24. the earth is the lord's and everything in it the world and all who live in it for he founded it on the seas and established it on the waters who may ascend the mountain of the lord who may stand in his holy place the one who has clean hands and a pure heart, who does not trust in an idol or swear by a false god, they will receive blessing from the Lord and vindication from God their Savior. Such is the generation of those who seek him, who seek your face, God of Jacob. Lift up your heads, you gates, be lifted up, you ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is the King of glory? the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, you gates, lift them up, you ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is he, this King of glory? The Lord Almighty, he is the King of glory. Amen. Let us pray. The Lord Almighty, he is the King of glory. That's why we worship this morning. That's why we come to spend time together just to honor God, to lift up God, to praise God, to worship God, to acknowledge God as Lord and Savior. Lord, we are just so thankful for all that you are in our lives. The bad things, the good things, the, the joyous things, the sad things, the healed things, the Lord, ah, everything, everything, you know, as the writer of Ecclesiastes says, there's a time for everything. There is a time for everything. And right now, Lord, our time is to sit and worship you, to acknowledge you as God our Father. But also, Lord, to acknowledge not only the good things you do in our lives, but also to acknowledge that you are our Savior, our salvation, our redemption. And Lord, we as your children, are naughty we are sinful and father i don't know i just for myself i just feel it gets tougher and tougher the more we stay locked in because lord i think we are built for communion we are built for community we are built to share together and encourage one another to face each other and to be strong in each other and lord often when we stand alone we fall as the scripture says, Lord, two cords are better than one. So, Lord, I just pray this morning for each and every one of us that we may come to you and ask for forgiveness, that you will set us free, that you will break the chains that hold us. Lord, through the blood of the Lamb, set us free. We pray with thanksgiving, Lord. We also pray this morning, Lord, that as we share at your table, as we share in your word and your message, that you will open our hearts, that we may be fed and nourished, and that we may leave here praising you, the Lord Almighty. <coughs> we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. <coughs> I really don't know what's going on with my throat and my nose and I think it's just this wind that is howling and blowing and it's in my eyes and everywhere. So please forgive me if I cough and I splutter. Um, but we're here this morning to hear God's word. And this morning we talk, turn to Paul's letter to the Ephesians chapter 1 <clears throat> verses 3 to 14. Chapter 1 of Ephesians, verses 3 to 14. 
Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love he predestined us for adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ and according with his pleasure and will to the praise of his glorious grace which he has freely given us in the one he loves. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace that he lavished on us with all wisdom and understanding. He made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure which he purposed in Christ to be put into effect when the times reach their fulfillment to bring unity to all things in heaven and on earth under Christ. In him we were also chosen, having been predestined according to the plan of him who works out everything in conformity with the purpose of his will, in order that we who were first to be to put our hope in Christ might be for the praise of his glory. And you who were included in Christ when you heard the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation, when you believed you were marked in him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit, who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possession to the praise of his glory. Just that far this morning, and we ask that God bless that reading to us. I don't know about you, but that was just such a delightful reading. One that probably has sermons galore in it, at least 30, I would say. Um, but in essence, it just, it just sums up or speaks of God's amazing grace, God's incredible love, God's redemption plan, and God's purpose for our lives. Ephesians is just one of those nice books in the Bible full of encouragement but it also contains a few verses that are i don't know what the word is i don't want to use challenging but probably contentious is probably a closer term um so i want to just get to them quickly and you'll see what i mean there in verses four to six for he chose some translations use um, the word elected um, us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight in love, he predestined us for adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ in accordance with his pleasure and will, to the praise of his glorious grace, which he has freely given us in the one Jesus he loves. So you see what I mean? These are words that we know of, and they sort of we try and avoid them because they can be contentious, like I said, but they also detract from the core me message, the bigger picture, as it were, were of God's grace, love, redemption, and purpose. So I just want to put them out of the way quickly. Let's just have a quick squiz of them um, and see what the election choice God chose us. But listen to what Paul says. He speaks of God choosing mankind before the creation of the earth to be made in his image, to be his sons and daughters. So there's this picture of God that's his plan. He wanted all of us to be chosen. He chose each one of us. As the psalmist says, we are knitted together in our mother's womb. God knew us before we were created. It's the foundation of our faith. God's only glorious, gracious choice of us. John 3.16 For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. It's not, and I don't want to be facetious in any way. It's not a case of any, 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 no. It's all of us, the world. It's about us. It's not about us, sorry. It's not about us, but about God. Predestination follows that, a similar logic. Richard D. Phillips defines it like this. He says, God's determining something in advance. In this case, that we should be children and heirs in his family. And simple. In fact, we can say that predestination, in a sense, complements election, in that it's the reason for our election, the purpose of our adoption in and through Jesus Christ. There's this picture of God 
has a plan. And that plan is that all may be saved. John 3.16 again. That all may be saved. The world. So I hope we can just put that behind us now. It's nothing contentious. It's nothing fancy. It's just God's plan was to save all of us. Um, but we we tend to take it out of context and we get stuck on these things. I know there's all sorts of jokes about predestination and all sorts of things, but we miss the point. The point is really, really just about God's grace, God's love, God's redemption and purpose for us. So I wanted to say this morning, there's a few points that we miss out on if we if we get stuck on those sort of things. Verse 3, for example, praise be to God who blessed us with every spiritual blessing in Christ. Beautiful. Jeremiah 2, 29, 11. That's where it comes from. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Blessing, grace, love, redemption, purpose. Simple. The next one is probably one that we struggle with because it calls us to a higher standard. It calls us to something bigger. But we lose it because it's nestled in those verses of election or choice and predestination. Verse 4, to be holy and blameless. I'm going to leave that with you. I'm not going to go into that this morning, but just it's there. You know, there's a sense of God's grace, God's mercy, redemption. It's all there, but there's a call for us to be holy and blameless. Um, because next comes our adoption, our redemption through Jesus Christ. That's two marvelous words. I mean, that's absolutely beautiful. Amazing grace through God's will and pleasure, freely given to us through Jesus. Verse 7, redemption through the forgiveness of sins. John 3.17, we often miss it because of John 3.16. For God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through Him. Well, again, as Paul says, in accordance with the riches of God's grace. I really hope you're starting to see the bigger picture. And a picture that we often miss because we get caught up in the semantics. We get distracted by the small things. I mean, I could wax lyrical for hours on this passage. It's beautiful. But Paul continues. And just see the beauty. He says, God made known the mystery according to his goodwill and pleasure to bring unity between heaven and earth. <coughs> and that just took me straight back to the Lord's Prayer. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. I mean, it's too beautiful, too marvelous for words. Grace, love, redemption, and purpose. So in conclusion this morning, please, I challenge you, go and read it again for yourselves. But stop and absorb this beautiful promise found in verse 13. And you also, you also, you also, you also, were included in Christ. When you heard the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation, when you believed you were marked in him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit. Verse 14 ends to the praise of his glory. Man, it's beautiful. It's really, really, really beautiful. And finally, just for me, when I wrote this, I just thought I wanted to go and sit after this and go and sing two songs. And maybe you feel like it too. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me, my favorite hymn. And then to sing, to God be the glory, great things he has done. A beautiful reading. Go and read it. Amen. Let us pray. Father God, what an amazing passage. It just speaks of your grace, your mercy, your redemption and your purpose for our lives. Yes, Father, we see the grace, we see the thing, but we are really challenged by being holy and blameless for your glory. So, Lord, be with us. Flesh this reading out for us. May it become something so beautiful within us. 
so amazing that it just nestles there beautifully to know that you chose each one of us before creation, before we were born. You know our names and you called us right back then. And Lord, may we surrender to your call. May we surrender to your predestined call upon our lives to be holy and blameless for your glory. Father God, I pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Right, as we prepare for communion, let us once again hear God's command um, or Jesus' command recorded in Paul's letter to the Corinthians where he says, For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you and the Lord Jesus in the night in which he was betrayed, took bread and giving thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. As often as you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you show the Lord's death until he shall come. Beautiful. That's taken from the modern King James Version. We now, this morning, as God's people, gather to obey and joyfully follow our Savior's command and example, in word and in deed, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. As Jesus, our Savior, took bread and wine on this night, I now take these elements of bread and wine and set them apart from this common use to this holy use and mystery. May our prayer always be, feed us, Lord, with the bread of life. We continue to praise you, Father, the Lord of all creation, through your goodness. We have this wine, fruit of the vine, and work of human hands to offer. May our prayer always be, Lord, satisfy our thirst. Let us pray. Almighty God, source of all life and love, with joy we give you thanks and praise that we live in your word, world, a world that you are always creating and sustaining by your power and that you have so made us that we can know and love you, trust and serve you. We give you thanks that you loved the world so much that you gave your only son that everyone who has faith in him may not die but have eternal life. We thank you, Lord, that Jesus was born among us that he lived our common life here on earth, that he suffered and died for us, that he rose again and returned to your glory. We thank you, Father, that through the Holy Spirit, Jesus is always present, and that we can rejoice in the sure hope of his triumph, knowing that through faith your kingdom will come, and that in life and in death and for all eternity you are with us. Father, we thank you that we do not celebrate in the sacrament of Holy Communion alone, but in the fellowship of all believers, past, present, and all to come. Almighty God, may these gifts of bread and wine be a means for our sharing in the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ our Lord, in the fellowship of his love, and in the proclamation of his sacrifice until he comes. Amen. After Jesus had taken the bread and thanks to his father, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and he gives it to us this morning and says, this is my body given for you. As often as you do this, do this in memory of me. <coughs> and likewise, after the cup, with thanksgiving, he once again said, this cup is the new covenant sealed by my blood for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, do this in memory of me. And so we remember that our Lord Jesus took and takes away the sin of the world. We pray that the Lord will have mercy on us and that he fills us with his peace. The communion of the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, given for you, the communion of the blood 
of our Lord Jesus Christ poured out for you. Come all and feed on him by faith with thanksgiving in your hearts. Amen. Please take a moment and share in the sacrament, the body and the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let us pray. O oh God, may we who have shared in Christ's body live in the power of his risen life. We who drank his cup share, in his, share his life with others. And we who the Holy Spirit enlightens take your light out into the world. Keep us, we pray, firm in the hope you set before us until we and all your children are free and the whole world praises your name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we pray. Amen. Thank you for joining us this morning. I pray that you've been truly blessed. Um, grace, mercy, redemption, and purpose. Grace, mercy, redemption, and purpose. That's the simple message. Go and read it again. And I pray that you will be blessed as you do. And I say to us all this morning, now may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, both now and forevermore. Amen. Go in peace, God's children. Amen. <laughs>